another day, another project. Hello my friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're going to be working on a 1993, I believe. Let me take a look here. What we got here? 692, so it's either 92 or 93. Yamaha XT225. This is a little dual sport. Uh, it's a young man who uh, I started uh, conversing with a little bit on social media. He was having some bike trouble. I walked him through um, some of it, and then he just decided to bring it on over. Uh, so we're going to be doing a top end on this. I'm going to be uh, pulling the cylinder head and the cylinder, checking everything out, replacing the piston, the rings. He also wants to replace the valves. Uh, he's already started taking it apart. So we already got the carburetor out, the tank and the seat and all this is off already. This is the way it was delivered to me. So we are going to get started on this and see how everything plays out. I've been doing all kinds of projecty stuff here today. Uh, already working on this Honda. Just put some tires on it and cleaned it up. So if anyone is looking for a Honda NC700X, I'm gonna put a seat cover on it once that comes in and that'll be for sale. But uh, this will be our project of the day. So let me get my tools out and uh, get this thing in the air a little bit so we can start working on it. All right, before I even get this thing completely taken apart, well, I've removed the uh, upper engine uh, mount bracket, which attaches to the cylinder head here. And I have removed the exhaust and the intake inspection covers. And I loosen up this cam cover here. We just need to tap that off with something. So we should be able to check to see if the, there we go. Check to see if the cam is correct. Timing here. So I always want to line this up before you take it apart if you have a chance. So in here, hopefully you can see that. Maybe I'll grab a light, but there's the little T in there. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. So it's top dead center. This should be lined up with this little arrow here. And that should mean that we are ready to uh, inspect our valve clearances. now. You can see how much that's moving. That is probably about five times too much clearance on the intake. And the exhaust is really, really loose as well. I got the uh, manual up over here. So we will take a look at what the requirements are for this, for the clearances. But I can tell right now that that's way too much. Let's see here. Well. We'll find it and uh, I'll let you know. But that's the first issue, but uh, here we go. Intake should be 0.05 to 0 0.09 millimeters and 0.15 to 0.20 millimeters right there. And I can tell just by feeling these that they are way too loose. But, this young man wanted me to take it apart and replace these parts. He already ordered them. Um, I had some discussions with him and I said we should do some diagnostics first, but he was excited to order parts. Uh, he's got the parts already, so we're gonna change them out. But my thoughts are that this is probably just a valve clearance issue, but you can see that there is some oil leakage. Hang on a second, right here. So changing out the, the uh, gaskets and stuff isn't going to hurt matters but we're probably doing repairs that we don't need to but the parts are reasonable and uh, we're all going to learn something i've removed the exhaust pipe and started taking some other bits and pieces off here i just wanted to give a uh, little tom's tinkering and adventures pro tip i save a lot of plastic bags uh, anytime i order something you know comes with plastic bags i just keep them little Ziploc bags and I just stuff them in another big bag here because when you're taking these things apart you could just throw all your bolts and nuts and fasteners and stuff in a bucket but you may not remember what exactly they go to so I try to keep individual units together in the bag so this is the camming uh, cam chain tensioner there's the mount bolts for that so that's all in one these are the exhaust 
pipe mounts and there's the exhaust gasket. Now you can put tape on here or write with a Sharpie as well if it helps you. I just kind of like to keep things together like this. I'll, I'll know that exhaust gasket, and those are the exhaust bolts. And here's the cam inspection covers and the bolts. Uh, there's the uh, top uh, cam sprocket cover. And there's the screws that mount that. And then those are the timing plugs. So I'll remember what that goes to. And for this top motor mount, I just put the bolt right back through it. And then I put the other bolts back in well they're on the other side here but i just put them right back in there i removed the horn and kind of tuck that out of the way and just put that bolt right back in there just loose so that's another thing you can do if you want you can just kind of gently turn them in there but in the meantime i have loosened this top uh, cam sprocket mount bolt which i will take out And don't drop that washer. I'll put that in there for now. All these bolts are loose, so I'm gonna take them all out and then we'll pull this cylinder head off. That can just kind of drop right in there for now. It's not gonna go anywhere. So I'll uh, take these all off and I'll show you removing the cylinder head. I've removed that cam sprocket out of there and uh, you always wanna put a piece of uh, wire or string or whatever you got on there so that this doesn't drop all the way in there and you can't get it out later. So you put that on there. All the bolts are loose. These two down here, are, I mean are removed, these two down here and the four on the top. So this thing should be ready to come off. There we go. And there is our cylinder. The valves do not look bad, but we will see what they uh, appear like when we take them out. There is our top of our piston. And I've got it at top dead center, so I'm going to... Uh, I'll remove that cylinder as well. We can do that right now. Or we should be able to do that right now. Let's take a look here. go. It's as simple as that. And there is our cylinder. Yeah, looks a little bit worn in there, but we'll have to take a good look at it. And the piston doesn't look too bad either. But we'll move all these parts over to the bench and we'll take a peek at them. I removed the cam from the uh, cylinder head here. It's just uh, Two 10 millimeter bolts. The uh, plate here is um, hammered up and over the edge of one of these on each of these bolts. So you got to make sure you tap that out of there, and then this cam just kind of pulls out of here. It's a, a light press fit, so you have to put a bolt in the end of it and then just kind of pull, and it pops right out. Now, in order to get these cam followers out, it looks like we need a special tool and um, I'll have to read up to see if there's any other way to get them out, but I don't see an easy way to remove them. So I am going to try to remove these valves without taking them out. I think I might be able to get in here with my valve compressor. Now looking at uh, this intake valve, you can definitely see there is an issue. So I guess the uh, young man was correct. We do have an issue with at least the intake valve. You see the head of it is all jacked up right here. It should look like this one. So I'm gonna get my valve spring compressor and see if I can get in there with it. I'm hoping I can. Here's my homemade valve spring compressor. It's out of a big old C clamp. And then there's a socket attached to the end of it and it has a little window cut out on it. So what you do is you tighten up this clamp and that socket pushes down and then you should be able to get these valve keepers out. Um, if you've never seen this done before, maybe you're not understanding exactly what I'm all talking about, but I will hopefully be able to get this out of here. And it looks like it's going to clear this uh, cam follower. It's going to make my life a little bit more difficult, but uh, that's basically my life in a nutshell. So 
My life's always a little more difficult. There we go. It already popped loose. And there's one of the little keepers popped out. And the other one, I see it. You probably cannot see what I'm talking about, but I will show you in a moment. There's the little valve keepers that I'm talking about. And uh, I'm gonna leave that valve in there for now because the end of it looks pretty beat up. Actually, let's see if we can push it out. Eh, I think I'm gonna have to file it a little bit. But I'll show you with one of these new valves. So here's the new valve. There's the beautiful new end, how it should look. And they go through. And these valve keepers, there's two of them. They fit on there. Just like that. And the other one goes on the other side. And the compression of this spring holds them in there. I'm hoping I'm explaining this so you can understand it. There we go. See that? The compression of the spring holds them in once it's installed. So when I use that valve spring compressor, it's pushing on this, pushing that down, and then those will pop out. So I'm gonna have to fit those back in there, which is gonna be a, a treat in itself, but uh, I'll get it. Dual valve springs. So for this one, um, I'm probably gonna get in here with a file and clean that up. See how ragged that is? I don't want it chewing up the valve guide in here. And the valve seal is down in there. And I'll replace that as well. Okay, I kind of went out of order here. I should have removed this piston. Um, this is a mistake you'll only make one time. Unless you're Tom's Tinkering Adventures, you might make it twice. You wanna make sure that you put a lot of towels or rags or whatever down here around the piston because when you remove the little piston clip, which I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this when I do this because this is kind of a pain in the ass. The piston clip is right there. So if you remove that and you don't have all these rags here, then you chance dropping it into the uh, crankcase. And there's lots of different ways to remove these. I got these nice little bent needle nose pliers. Actually, let me, I can't do this with a, one hand and holding a camera. I have a lot of skills, but not that kind of skills. Let me see if I can get you anywhere close if I, my head and my hands and stuff aren't in the way and the rags and everything else. There we go, clip is out. And then piston pin, I can kind of push out from the other side with my pinky. Hopefully, you seeing this? There you go. I'm gonna be replacing all this anyway, so. And there's our piston. So I've been uh, cleaning up parts and inspecting them and uh, the cylinder's looking pretty good. So we're gonna go about uh, getting ready to replace this piston. This is the new piston. I'm not sure what the brand is or anything. This looks like it's some, it says AHL on it. So it's probably just some Chinese piston. I don't know, I didn't get any literature with it, but one of the things you need to do when you're replacing a, a piston in a rings and a set of rings is to install the rings in the cylinder off the piston. I like to, push them down with the piston like this so that you can get them level in there. And then you need to check what's called ring end gap. That's right here. So it tells you what your ring end gap is. So the top ring should be 0.15 to 0 0.30 millimeters. Let's see, that's a 10, so that's, or a, that's 10 thousandths. So it should be 006 to 012. I've already checked this one. I'm just kind of showing you how you do it. And then you just check the clearance here between the end of it. So 
So we're gonna do check all those and then we need to install these rings on the piston and then install the piston and then we'll get ready to install the cylinder. The piston rings are installed on the piston. Uh, one thing you have to make sure when you install new rings is that the end gaps on them are staggered. You can see this one is over here. The second one is over there and it's kind of hard to see the oil rings, but those are staggered as well. So you don't want those all in line. Um, many pistons will have an arrow. You'll have to read to see what it says, if the arrow is supposed to point towards the exhaust or the intake. This one says in. So we're putting that on the intake side. I've got a new gasket. We've cleaned all this uh, surface here. Installed a new O-ring there. And we have our locator dowels in. So I'm gonna install the cylinder next. You wanna make sure that you um, put a little bit of oil on everything, lubricate up the rings, lubricate the piston and the cylinder as well. I'm probably not going to film installing this cylinder because I'm just gonna be, you know, elbows and stuff in the way. So we'll come back once I got that installed. Well, the cylinder install actually went really smooth. <coughs> um, I just put these two bolts in here just to kind of hold the cylinder down. What I like to do after I install a cylinder like this is, let me get you in the, in the holder here. I like to uh, cycle the engine to make sure everything feels and sounds good. You know, that nothing is binding. I already feel one issue here. You see how this chain is moving? It fell off of the sprocket in here. And uh, that could be disastrous. See, look at the cylinders, uh, pistons moving up and down in the cylinder and the chain isn't moving. So I just have to kind of get that back on there and make sure it stays on the sprocket down there, which is a minor pain in the butt. That's all right though. So everything feels nice. We will put this at top dead center and then we will get to work on getting the cylinder head cleaned up and get ready. Maybe we can get that installed tonight as well. First thing we're gonna do with this cylinder head is we're gonna do a little light surfacing on it here. I've got my uh, granite slab, some 600, 600 grit sandpaper taped down and I'm just gonna do some circles. Keeping it uh, as flat as I possibly can on here. Rotating it around as I do this. I don't have any reason to suspect that this cylinder head is warped, but uh, this is gonna clean it up. You can already see it's uh, cleaning it up a little bit right there. So we'll get that all cleaned up nicely, get that nice and flat, and then we'll move on to the next step. It cleaned up pretty nicely. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to lap our new valves. This is our brand new valve here. And what I have here is valve lapping compound. So what that is, is it's basically, it's kind of like a grease with has got uh, uh, grit in it. So it's like a grease with sandpaper in it. And what you do is you apply that to this face of the valve, and then you install the valve into here. Let me see if I can get you set up. And then this is a real high-tech tool here. It's a suction cup. And you try to get that suction cup stuck on there, and it doesn't always work very good. So you maybe use the small one. Hopefully that one will stick. And what you do is you just, uh, Try to rotate the valve. It doesn't always work all that good. So I'm going to do that. And what that does, like it says, is it uh, that grit gets in here and it will make sure that this surface here lines up with this surface here so that you have good um, seal on your valves. I'm try to make this work here while we're on camera. See, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but that's the idea. Try to get that suction cup to stick on there. These valves kind of stink because they have this uh, writing in the middle. So this big one's too big and the small one is too small. But that's the idea. You use the uh, coarse first and then you do the fine. 
and I got to do both of these valves. Sometimes you just got to get creative on stuff. So that's the exhaust valve with the uh, coarse. I'll clean that up and then we're gonna put the fine on it and then we'll be done with both the valves, uh, lapping them anyway. All right, I got the valves installed. Using my homemade valve spring compressor. And like I said, it was a pain in the butt getting her on this since I couldn't remove these uh, rocker shafts, but I did get it. And uh, I removed these adjuster screws. This one's the exhaust one. You see that's beat up a little bit. That's the intake one and uh, yeah, I don't know why, why that intake valve got damaged like that on the end of it, but that's not good. So we're gonna be ordering those. They're probably a couple bucks each. Uh, I wish I had them because I could set the valve clearance on the bench. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna install the cam and then I will show you installing the cylinder head. All right, let's try this out here. We got the uh, cylinder ready to go. Cylinder head is ready to go. I installed the cam, torqued these two bolts down to uh, 5.8 foot-pounds. We've installed the new head gasket, and we've got our locating dowels installed. There's also a rubber seal that goes around this one. And now, here comes the fun. Let's see here if we can make this all come together into one happy family. Oops. My light. All right. Well, we are installed. Now the problem is gonna be making sure that this chain is where it needs to be. We're just gonna have to hope for the best on that. Let me see here. I'm trying to find a good place to wrap this thing around for now. Okay, now what we need to do is install these head bolts and then look up the torque sequence. There's a torque sequence for all of them there. It should be one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I'll look that up and we'll come on back. There you go. RTFM, read the freaking manual. This is gonna tell us our head bolt torque and the sequence. So one, two, three, four, five, six, bolts one through four, 16 foot-pounds, bolts five and six, 14 foot-pounds. I'm gonna set up my torque wrench. We're gonna to torque that. Um, I have also, so I just uh, snug these all down. They're not torqued yet. And in the meantime, I also have set up the cam timing here let me show you i think we tried to see in here before but all right there now hopefully you can see the t top dead center and there's the mark and it should go right with that indicator so we are already timed for our cam so all i really have to do now is torque the head bolt head bolts, torque this cam uh, sprocket bolt, install the cam chain tensioner, and I am pretty much done because we do not have those adjusters. I have to get those on order. So let me get this done and we'll take a look and see if there's anything else that needs to be completed. Otherwise, this job will be as done as we can get it today. Last bit I'm gonna install on this video is gonna be the cam chain tensioner. Now, I may have, uh, if you've seen some of my videos, I've done a few of these before. This thing is extended, so you need to retract it. On this one, there is a bolt that screws into the end of it. You take that out. And I don't know how well you can see in there, but there's a slot in there. So you take a little flat tip screwdriver and you turn it clockwise. And that thing will retract. Now you have to kind of do this little shuffle where you hold the screwdriver because it's under spring tension. If I let it go, it just 
automatically springs out. Oh yeah, my screwdriver's broken there. So you turn it in, hold the screwdriver in there. Try not to jack up the gasket too much. Put your bolt through. And then, I'm sitting here behind the camera. I have to try to get alongside of it. Hopefully you can still see. And try to feed this whole thing in here. And hopefully I can get this top one in too. Without messing up that gasket. This is a time when you need like a third hand. If I can get at least one of these sort of flush, it will be all right. <laughs> there we go. And now I'll let the tension off. And what you should see is this thing is tight. Here, I can back this off and show you how this works. There we go. It's a lot harder to do when it's in there. See how loose that is? Can you see that? And then I let the tension out, and now it's tight. So we will tighten these up and uh, look up the torque value on these and make sure they're torqued properly. And then uh, I'm basically gonna call it because I'm gonna wanna make sure I have uh, all this stuff lined up when I install those valve adjustment screws so we can set the valve clearance. And there she is. Pretty much uh, new valves, new piston, new rings, new gaskets. Um, I don't have a tank, I don't have a carburetor, don't have a battery, don't have an air cleaner, so I can't run it. And I don't know if uh, the young man is going to be bringing by those parts when he picks it up or if he's going to put it together and fire it up himself. But uh, if I get those parts, I'll make a quick video letting you know how it operates. But uh, I'm not anticipating any issues. So if you're digging what I'm putting out, give me that thumbs up. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. And thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.